right, Tom. We are live. We are? I'm, yeah. I'm waiting for it to pop up on my thing here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now I can share it. It's a little bit of delay. Start what? Okay, I got your start. Say something. Okay, I just hit start. Okay, there we go. All right. We so, are live. Oh, oh I gotta I gotta commute this thing. Yeah. <laughs> There's a, there's a delay between the two screens. It's crazy. All right. So the whole thing, uh, uh, we're in the green room because this is how you and I would talk if we were just hanging out before the gig. Correct. And and people are going to <laughs> drop and listen in on our conversation. So uh, uh, before we get into all the tower, everybody, uh, and I know there are a few people listening. We've got six, 14 people watching already. Ty, I told yeah, I'm you. you. This is your new career, dude. Yeah, but if you're the guy that's drawn, you're you're the draw. Okay, so here's the, before we get to the Tower of Power stuff. Before we got to tell everybody, I'm going to put this picture up, uh, and it'll be next to you. Uh, give me a second. It's you pull it up your camera like you did before. <laughs> right? Oh yeah, but this one you can't see this, but you know it's the four pictures of uh, the picture of the four of us in the jazz at the Boojum Tree. Oh, I put that. Yeah, well, I can see that on my phone, probably. Right, right. So you can see. You remember that? That's us. Yeah. This is proof that you and I go way back. <laughs> <laughs> that was us. Forty years, anyway. Forty years. Yeah, that one. That yeah. was. No, maybe, maybe that was in eighty-one. I think maybe elementary, elementary school, right? Yeah, ex at least. Uh, and. <laughs> Then uh, the other thing that I was going to do, and uh, people will see this, and you can see. Well, no, I should. Yeah, you, you should be able to see this. This is no. Oh, this is the one. More? <laughs> I put my glass, I have to put my glasses on. Okay, this is the one. This is proof, and this is the only way I know how to do this. This is proof that Tom was a young man. <laughs> I know there's a reflection off of the screen. Yeah, uh, I think people can see it. Yeah, there's Tom. I think you must have been like 22 or 23 or something, blowing out your candle. Correct. That was at your parents' house. Yeah. And I'm sure people are enjoying this. Then, and then, uh, sure, sure. yeah, show the one that, that that one. Yeah. This is the one with the whole family, and you know, I may be able to make a a, a better picture of that. Well, uh, the the top the top standing is my family, and then below are friends. Right. Are my I think family. I was taking the picture. But, uh, you're taking the picture, so you're not in it. But yeah, but that was that was for your birthday, and uh, we <laughs> I think it was after we were on the circus together. And, yeah, I mean, we're, and dur after and during, and and during. So uh, one thing that I thought about because you and I, in well, while we were on the circus, we were huge music fans. Obviously, everybody's always sitting around listening to music, and we were always listening to the Tower of Power. And this a lot, was, yeah. right? A lot. So mm -hmm. I remember, I think it was one of the first concerts I went to in San Francisco at the old Waldorf do you, with you to see Tower of Power. Do you remember yeah. that? Yes, I do remember that. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When, when was that? Like 83 or something? 83 maybe. Yeah. My God, those guys were, it, that was amazing. Yeah. So and those were the dark days of the tower. Oh, those, we're getting into the dark days of where they were kind of, uh, you know, drugs and alcohol had kind of stunted their career. <laughs> they still yeah. played great. Yeah, they still <laughs> but, played great. But they weren't there. They didn't have their business together, you know. So yeah, as kind of how that works. Yeah, yeah. So, but people say, if I can interrupt you too. Yes, absolutely. I'll just say something because there's a few people listening. You see. Um, everybody, this is Jeff News, and Jeff News is one of my very best friends, and we met in 1980 in Kansas, or no, wait, no. Oklahoma. My, no, oh, my first show, Oklahoma. we met in Colorado Springs, and my oh, first show. We needed a drummer, and we were like playing on a circus band with Circus Vargas under a tent, like an eight-piece band, and I don't know how the band leader found some kind of... Uh, musicians referral service in 1980 yeah. and got a hold of you and Jeff was living in Lincoln, Nebraska. Absolutely correct. And said, I'll take the gig. We didn't know anything about this dude. And he came, came down and, uh, uh, 
kind of was baptism by fire for Jeff and oh. uh, for one of us too, but that was, it's a hard gig because you got to remember if you're playing circus, you got to play marches and polkas and all kinds of Latin beats and then you have to swing and then you have to play a funk beat and then you have to play a rock beat and then you have to play a chord and then you have to do a drum roll and then you have to do cymbal crashes when somebody does something spectacular and then you have to count off the next tune. <laughs> So, so anyway, that's how we met. So uh, I've been knowing this dude. Uh, we did some serious road time together. That's okay. all I want to say. So now, not th <laughs> this show isn't supposed to be about me, but since you brought that up, you no, know, well, I don't want people to know who you are because okay. these are people so, walking well, that are my friends. You you can't necessarily see this. Um, I can. Yeah, I can. I can. Yeah. This, this was my uh, a buddy of mine came out to see. There we go. There we go. That was yep. my very first show on Circus Vargas. If you look closely <laughs> enough, there's a big drop of sweat on my nose, and I was scared shitless. A, <laughs> a buddy yeah. of mine came and he took a picture of that. And I'll never forget it because you're talking about drum rolls. And and of course, when when I was in high school, a marching band, I learned how to read a drum roll and read read a chart and you know, five stroke rolls and marches. And <laughs> I hadn't played any or done any reading for like four or five years. And I get thrown out there. And one of the first songs out the gate was Barnum and Bailey's favorite or whatever. Like, da, 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 da. Right. Thunder so, and Thunder and Blazes, Thunder and Lightning, something like that. Yeah, yeah. One of the, one of whatever it was. But all I know is, is they had a, like a photocopy of one of the marching band charts and they put right. it up and, and I'm going, okay, Mark, I'm thinking, I'm waiting for the show. I'm nervous as hell. I'm waiting for it to start. And march, marching band tempo, da, 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 maybe a little faster, like like 100. And Steve goes, okay, ready? One, two, two, two. Ba, da, 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 da. All of a sudden, the yep. song is over, and I didn't even know where we were at. And he took the music, threw it on the floor. Okay, next song. One, two. I was terrified. <laughs> at the end of the show, I was a train wreck. And this, this is a true story. True story. I remember this. Right? I so <laughs> in between the shows, my first show, in between the shows, all of you, I went and I was, I, I would went to go to the bathroom or get some water or something. I come yeah. back and you were all standing in a circle and I start walking towards you and the bass player walks toward me and puts his hand up and he goes, uh, don't go over there. And I said, why? He said, because they're all talking about you and whether they even want you to play the next show. <laughs> God, what a terrible day. Oh, my God. But uh, since we're doing this. But since we're talking about it, you ended up doing a really great job. I, I did. I, baptism by fire from a, from a young boy from Aurora, Nebraska. Look it up, everybody. Population 920. Okay. <laughs> so not only you, but now there's another picture. Not only you, but this guy. John Worley. John, John Morley said, okay, listen, this is what we're going to do. Grab your book of music and come with me. And we went out and sat over by some rocks and yeah. went through the book with me. And he played his horn and played it. And I went through the charts yeah. and, and it took me about a week. And, and, you know, then I was like snoozing. No, but, <laughs> but well, yeah. you, you, because yeah. we all said, so everybody, like we're all, we're all saying like, you know, we got to get rid of this guy and I go like, and I was going like, well, he's a really nice guy. And, <laughs> and, and um, you know, what are we going to do? we got to have a drummer. And, you know, let's, let's work, you know, like John said, too, let's work with this guy and see if we can't bring him up to speed. Because, um, I mean, you know, we were all kind of, I guess, you, you, you know, we'd all come, everybody in the band had kind of gone to a, a really good music school, right? A bunch yeah. of us went out from LA and had some good training. And Cal State LA. I think a lot of you guys were, and foot, and I, and also I had a couple of years at Foothill College with Terry Suma, right? You know, great, great teacher. Yeah, so really good train, really good training back when uh, the junior college system in California was killing in the Bay Area. It was good, it was really and good. in and LA too. Tuition free killing. if you were a California resident, right? Yeah, it was free pretty much. Yeah, if you were a California resident. So now uh, to, to put a button on this particular story, if anybody ever says, how's he sound? And you say, well, he's a really nice guy. You know, he sucks. <laughs> no, <you don't> suck. 
<laughs> okay. But so now we have now we now we have kind of sort of a, a basis of uh does right. anybody have any questions or anything yet? Let me see. Right, so I, I the How I, many people are watching? Six. <laughs> I've got 43, 46. Well, that's like a new record. It's for me, yeah, it's huge. <laughs> well, you know, I was watching a couple of John Mater I was uh, doing uh watching the George Shelby one from the other day. Everybody everybody should watch that and get to know who George Shelby is great sax player. And I talked to him. I, I called him after we talked last night. Oh, good. And, and we talked for like an hour and 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah. It's so I got to know George and uh, and he's a good friend of yours and he's a good friend of Doc's. Yeah. Well, you know. And, um, yeah. So it, If there's a silver lining in all this, you said the last time you saw George was in London. You know, yeah. you guys, I wasn't there a, a festival or something you all are partaking we in? We played at Royal Albert Hall. And they were there uh, rehearsing, getting ready to go on the road with Phil Collins. Right, right. They came in after rehearsal, the whole horn section with Phil, Harry Kim, who just recently subbed for Sal, and, uh, you know, and uh, and, and uh, George, and uh, Dan Fanero, and uh, and Gordon Goodwin was in town. Wow. So, so Gordon Goodwin was there, too. And Jacob Collier was there. And... Um, we ended up doing a session with Jake with Collier the next day on our travel day at Air Studios in London, which is the studio that George Martin built out of an old church. Mm. Old, famous, famous studio with, uh, and, if, and if you guys don't know who Jacob Collier is, I highly recommend you go to YouTube, punch in Jacob Collier, C-O-L, and just check out this young man. He's uh, a musical genius complete utter musical genius agree and it was uh, great to hang out with for a day and i think you know last year so when we hung out he was 22 21 22 he's very old <laughs> oh he's so young and he was like rehearsing i remember he was rehearsing the horn section when we uh, I'm, i don't know when this is going to be released but he was rehearsing us and um I asked him on a little break. I said, have you, have you ever like rehearsed a horn section before? And he goes, no, actually, this is my first time. And I go like, it seems like you've been doing it all your, your whole life. You're like perfect. The things you say, the way you rehearse us, your patience with uh, waiting, like if there's any crit critique, he doesn't like, he waits to say something to see if it gets better. And then finally goes like, uh, you're a little flat. You're a little sharp. You push in and do that, and let's do it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, he's great. I think he's got perfect pitch on top of everything. Pretty sure. He, yeah. It's disgusting. <laughs> when I first listened to his his music, I I couldn't believe that he did as advanced harmonics and rhythms and drums and bass and piano, guitar, percussion instruments. And then, and then, and his video editing, editing skills, and you know how he changes his hair and his costumes. And he does it all that. If you when you see that, folks, most of that stuff he does in his bedroom at his mom's house. In right. London. <laughs> in my, that's how he did the uh, he redid the Beach Boys song in my room. I I've not seen that. Right. His, yeah. his content is he's got so much content. It's yeah ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, so I'm going to put the phone number back up in case anybody wants to ask questions. But now I want to get to your story uh, uh, about there's there's all kinds of stuff we can talk about in between. Oh, one one last thing. I'm going to throw this at you. I, this is going to be really hard to see. Oh, wait a second. Terry Suma said something. Terry Suma said, I'm watching. Thanks for the mention to Fiddle College. Terry, you are more than welcome, sir. And um, uh, everybody knows you are. Terry was one of my greatest. Oh, shoot. Hold on, that's sit more cruises. Yes. Look at, look at how skinny we all are. We're skinny, and look at those really short shorts. Yeah, well, that was it back then. <laughs> Let me think this, Terry Suma, one of the greatest teachers I've ever had in my life. Uh, just so patient, so kind, so knowledgeable, such a great player himself. And uh, I don't know if I would have stuck with it if it wasn't for him, because I'm, you know, believe me, I. I think I second year at, at, the, at college, I think I taxed his patience to the, <laughs> is he laughing now? I'm seeing he's laughing. Anyway, anyway, Terry. 
<laughs> Not you. So what did you want to, what were you saying? The oh. story? What story? Well, so uh, fast, I want to sort of like jump through, you know, we, we did the cruise ship together, which was, that was actually really fun. We made, uh, we had some really good times on the cruise ship. Jump with my roommate. We were roommates. Yeah. Yeah. On the cruise ship. Um, and then uh, the one last uh, background story uh, to Tom and his parents is when I got off the circus and wanted a place to stay, your parents took me in as one of the families, a yeah. member of the family. And I lived with your parents for a year or so. And uh, I give them like 20 bucks a month or something. And your mom was like, yeah, just give us some money for food. And and that was one of the 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 most they became more of a family to me than my own parents for did you cook did she cook for you she did your your mother <laughs> like lucky you right lucky me lucky me <laughs> my mom's cooking <laughs> oh, the, 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 and I, um, I so much about food and and so your mom's friend sue was sue right wasn't that yeah. and um it was her and i and your mom and your dad pretty much for right. you know, because Sue, uh, Sue was recovering from uh, broken neck or something. Yeah. yeah, she had something wrong with her neck. But I think it was cancer even in the neck or something. Yes. The bone cancer or bone something cancer. weird. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It wasn't pretty. Um, but anyway, that's our background story. And then over the years, you and I kind of went and went our ways and everything. But then you were married. And yeah, kids. Had all that, kids. We moved on. Yeah. Then you got right. Then I got Tower. Tower in 2002. Right. So so this is and this is a story that I asked you that I don't know how many people know the story, but but how what you how you were sharing with me about uh, learning the songs and and all that stuff. That's a great story. Like uh, oh, I have to remember. I have to memorize this music. Yeah, do you remember telling me that story about how you? Okay, so um, uh, in, in uh, at the end of 2001, I was kind of in a rut. The band I'd been playing in that had done so well, uh, Spangling, uh, Tony Lindsay was off with Santana, and he's so great. I mean, he was the main draw in the band, I have to admit. Um, and I was doing a lot of teaching, and I was doing a lot of uh, wedding band stuff, and I was definitely stuck in a musical rut. I had been doing before that in the nineties, I, I was still getting some doubling work, doing other stuff. And so I made a, I made a commitment to practicing. I swear to God, I made a new year's resolution. I'm going to practice every day. May only be 30 minutes, but I'm getting my friggin' horn out. And I'm going to practice every day. Like I did in college mm -hmm. and uh, 30 minutes turned to 45, turned to 90 minutes pretty quick, turned to over two hours in less than a week because the time just flew by. I started, thinking of new stuff to practice. I kept my horn set up. And on January 19th, 2002, my phone rings and it's the manager of Tower Power, Michelle Zarin, who's this uh, wonderful lady, uh, 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 you know, New Yorker with a very brassy, hey Tom, this is Michelle Zarin. <laughs> and you're naming him up for, uh, we we're, were want to know if you'd be interested in, uh, in uh, auditioning for Tower of Power. And I said, yeah, I mean, of course I would. And uh, so they, uh, I got another call. They sent me, so they sent me a bunch of music and they sent me a live CD of the band playing live. And um, so I listened to all that. So let me see, when was that? So it was like three weeks later. No, wait, 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 I'm out of six sequence. So say, so, yeah, I want to audition. So your auditions in two weeks, we're recording an album. You're going to go up to Cyclops Studios in San Francisco and you're going to audition. And I'm figuring, okay, what do they want from me? Well, they want to hear me solo because it's Lenny Pickett's chair. So I immediately started putting all my Tower Power records in and just soloing over them and kind of learning the parts and listening to them and, and, and purposely not trying to sound like Lenny Pickett. I really knew that. I go like, well, they don't want me to come in and sound like Lenny Pickett. I just want to play as good as I can play over that stuff. So I had two weeks of practice. I came into the audition. Um, I actually wasn't that nervous because I was prepared. I was more like I had a sh uh, just a, sh a shitload of adrenaline. My, my adrenal glands were pumping. 
Right. And uh, I remember the, like the, and it started breathing, but all that training I'd had playing solos and spangalang over R and B and funk music. I mean, all that was such great training because I remember, uh, Mila goes, you know, the two knock yourself out yeah. that we do. And I said, yeah, it's a, just, it's a long jam in the, in the key of F concert. He goes, exactly. He says, well, we want you to pretend it's that part in the tune and, the rhythm section is going to start playing and then uh, we just want you to take a solo. I said, okay. So the rhythm, start, the rhythm section starts playing and I already knew that's like, I'm not going to jump right in. I'm going to let them settle into a groove. So I hear how they're playing and I wait eight bars and then I don't play yet. And I said, I'm going to wait another eight bars. <laughs> I'm just going to let them vamp for eight. And, and uh, it's funny, uh, Larry Bragg is in the studio listening and uh, he really helped me get uh he was instrumental in me getting an audition by the way so i just want to say thanks to larry for that mm -hmm. <laughs> and he said Emilio was looking at him like is this guy ever going to start playing <laughs> so i started playing and i just took my time and and he, he cut me off and i was just feeling very comfortable playing and apparently i'd gone for three minutes and 15 seconds before he stopped me playing wow i just kept going and going i mean because you know, lenny pickett played that solo for 20 minutes yeah like that. yeah 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 excuse me folks i i'm not sick i have hay fever <laughs> <laughs> so, I my nose. so yeah um so anyway I, I played that i felt really good he had me play a solo over this time it's real which i was kind of surprised because there's no sax solo on that and then he did one other thing and then they threw some changes up in front of me and that was probably that was the last thing I did. That was probably my the weakest thing I did. Uh, I remember I played it once through and I kind of sucked. And I looked at it and I kind of went, "Let me do it one more time." He goes, "I said no, I want to do it one more time. I can do it a lot better." And I did. And um, it was about three weeks later. They called me back and said, "Okay, we've auditioned a lot of guys, and we want to you come and do some gigs." That's when they sent me all the music and a live CD and all the all these charts. And these charts, some of them were good and, and, and some of them were not very good and bad photocopies. And so I had to, I just started doing my homework. I don't know, I've never done homework like that before. It's just like, I mean, I think anybody who's a sax player who's going like, this is your break, dude. You want this gig or not, you're gonna do everything possible you can to get the gig. So I started uh, correcting parts Right, I'd have to listen and I have to figure out which was, you know, I knew I was the middle voice out of five, docs on the bottom, trumpet, trumpet, first tenor. So I just, you know, play through it and I had to fix about four or five things. And I think that's one of the things that really helped when I went back and did my first gig with Tower because we're at sound check and we're feeling I got the groove and there's a whole 16 bar ending that's not on the record but that's on the live CD that I had. And it wasn't on the chart. And he says, um, I have to teach you this ending. And I said, yeah, because I said, yeah, it wasn't on the chart. I said, but I wrote it out. I said, but I'm not sure if it's right. He looks there and he goes like, actually, that looks right. I mean, I actually got it right. So he played through and then we did another one. And there was another one he had to correct and I had fixed all my parts. And pretty much he just looks at me and goes, you're a good man, Tom Pollitzer. Like, <laughs> and I'm thinking, like, really? You mean there's there are people that don't do that? I mean, come on, yeah. Any audition. I mean, you got got a break. You're playing with Phil Collins, or you're playing with the Rolling Stones, and they want to audition you, or Prince, or anybody. I mean, you, you do everything you can to keep the gig. So um, that really helped, I think. And then I, the memorization thing you were asking me about. He goes. Uh, so that first uh, two days gigs I did, I was reading off, I got to read off music with a chart and a stand light. I was reading the charts. And, um, and they had a meeting, he says, well, you know, in two and a half weeks, we're going to Europe and uh, the band decided to take you along. Can you do that gig two and a half weeks in Europe and, and we'll see how it goes, because we'll see how it goes. Uh, which means like, okay, I'm not hired yet. And then he goes, how many tunes do you think you can memorize in two and a half weeks? And I went, I went, shit, man, I don't know. 
I, I though I haven't sat down. I mean, I remember when I was at the circus, I had the whole book memorized, three hour show. Right. But you know, we were doing two, three shows a day. And that's another story about memorization that I, about I want to share. My Gary Sheets did that. Remember Gary? Mm -hmm. Great one player. So anyway, I said, and he just goes, Do you think you can do four a week? How about four a week? And I go, so like when you come out, you can do like eight or ten. And I go like, well, that sounds really reasonable to me. I, I'm I, I'm sure I can do that. But I pretty much we had uh, 28 tunes in rotation, and I had 24 of them memorized when I started. And I had to have the music on the floor for like four tunes because they just weren't sinking in. And then the first week on the road with the circus, we were like started in Amsterdam. I didn't see anything but the inside of my hotel room, backstage, and the inside of the bus. Mm. That's all I saw for a week because all I was doing was sticking on my little headphones. And remember, we had a disc man. I had my disc man. And I was sitting there playing along really quietly in my hotel room just over and over and over and over again till about seven or eight days later, I was playing and I go like, I got this. I started like looking outward and listening and, and, and not having to think about my part. Now I'm able to like, what is everybody else playing a little bit more, you know? Because I was so worried about messing up and making a mistake. But I have to tell you, you know, uh, Emilio's in the, the band's like really, as long as they see you improving um, and, and not making the same mistakes over and over and over again, they're really accepting of when you make a mistake, you know, so and then on that tour on my birthday on March 16th in Zurich, Switzerland uh, The band had a meeting the night before Unbeknownst to me and after soundcheck they gave me the gig Wow, that's when they gave me the gig and that's when that that's the first time when I was playing that night And I was like, you know really high because I got the gig and I'm an official member and I'm playing here and and uh, um I'm thinking back when we saw Tower, and the first time I saw Tower was at the old Waldorf also when I was 16 and a half, 17, with a phony student ID, because you had to be 18 to get in. I had a phony student ID, and I remember, you know, standing up in front of Emilio and Doc and Lenny Pickett and, and Mick Gillette and, and, and just in front of the band going, oh, man, I always want to play with this band. And I had that deja vu moment that night. It was like... Wait a second. <laughs> I'm right next to these guys now. <laughs> so it was really cool. Dave Garibaldi's back there and you know Rocco. You know, Rocco was in the band then. And, you know, anyway, really, really great memory. And uh and uh, you know, God, 18 years later, I'm still doing it. 18 years. You know, I was talking about uh right. this thing with Jerry the other day. Um, I'm such a fan. And my, what I noticed when I was out for a few days doing monitors with you guys, even even all of you guys in the band are still fans of the music. Absolutely. And, and the, the music itself just has this this life that <clears throat> when you guys play a show, it doesn't matter what tune you start with. It's a perfect opener. <laughs> you know, whatever tune you end with, it's kind of like the perfect ending. Whatever tune you decide to do as an encore, it doesn't matter because any tune would work. I think anybody anybody listening right now know the last tune of the show is what it's hit. Well, it's, yeah. it's always going to be that tune. <laughs> but yeah. but the, the thing is, is you could make You're Still a Young Man the last tune of the set, too. That was often the encore. Right. With a fast tune after it or sometimes just, just You're Still a Young Man. Right. So uh, I'm going to put up I'm going to put up something and share with everybody. I'm going to do something different here. And I went. Uh, did you put your phone number yet? Uh, I did put I'm going to put it up in a, again in a minute, but I'm going to try. Well, I've been seeing my phone doing a bunch of stuff here um, while we've been talking. Well, um, people saying stuff. Okay. Uh, so Harry, Cam. No big All right. So, so never say never, Harry. <laughs> This out, Tom. This is something that I want you to hear. In okay. Just I'm I'm doing something here. Hopefully, everybody's still seeing you. All right. I'm I'm going to try something. 
Mm -hmm. uh, this, I'm hoping this works. And uh, I, this is something new I'm trying. Mm -hmm. oh, here we go. Here we go. Now it's still not working. Is it a cruise ship or circus thing? <laughs> it, 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 I may not be able to get this work. It's supposed to work. <laughs> and, Is it me? But for some reason. Hey, man, I want to sit last night. I told you, keep the solo short. Oh, man, I'm so sorry, man. I just got inspired and got carried away. It's not working. You can hear it, though, right? <laughs> Were we recorded that? No. Uh, okay, so that was something I'm supposed to be able to do this thing off of YouTube. Oh, uh, oh, that thing. Oh, okay. Right. So, so I was, t I thought I would try this whole thing that this, uh, uh -huh. this allows me to do, but for some reason, live in a show, it doesn't allow you to do it. Okay. I haven't learned it yet. Well, I've noticed since you started doing this, it's getting more technically advanced every time. <laughs> So you're gonna figure out. You're gonna figure out how. To, I mean, he has a backdrop now, folks. Well, I actually, yeah. Backdrop. You know, somebody yeah. said you don't. You look like like you're talking out of your bedroom. And I'm like, well, I am. I'm in my living room, and I I have this is a a, a wall a dolphin wall hanging. You know, just I, I have it. It. But I'm actually sitting at my uh, dining room table. Okay, so my my condo, my condo in San Ramon, California, where I have been like holed up now for well, shoot. Well, over a week, yeah, I'm yeah. pretty much. I mean, literally, not getting in my car for three. I actually did a major shopping run today, and uh, I don't think I need to uh, have any contact with anybody for uh, I don't know, at least ten days, twelve days. Like, I'm not just. I'm not going nowhere, man. <laughs> you know, this is one thing that uh, that this coronavirus thing might be actually doing good. Is we slowed down. We're commuting, communicating with people we haven't communicated with before. And uh, something like this is something that we may not have taken the time to do or no, necessarily would people take the time to sit and listen. Somebody calling. Hello? Hey, how are you? I'm good. Who, may I ask who's calling? Sure, this is Tim Schultz calling from New Jersey. Hi, Tim. I know Tim. Tim's a trumpet player. I'm doing good, thank you. <laughs> you guys sheltering in place? Yeah, we are. We got a re we got a real bad situation here. Uh, New York is losing ten people an hour. Oh, uh, we are in, right. in absolute shelter in place here. Uh, it's like Christmas Day every day. There's <laughs> nobody in the streets. It's uh, it's quite sad. Mm -hmm. I was planning on coming down to see Tower of Power in um, Orlando. Mm, yeah. her, and uh, we are unfortunately uh, looks like that's not going to happen. I'm quite disappointed because mm -hmm. really love seeing the guys. Haven't seen them since Brooklyn, and uh, it's always good to see Big Love and the guys uh, uh, playing playing the horns. I'm a trumpet player, and I'm I get totally inspired watching this band, and it's just uh, it's a blessing to be able to be not only friends and acquaintances with this band, but also to get to rub elbows with them and to uh, spend mm -hmm. some time. So we're uh, we're really we really love Tommy and. Uh, and Sal and all the guys, Emilio, and it's 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 fantastic. So I just wanted to send our love during a tough place, and uh, we're we're happy that uh, Tommy's spending some time on Facebook with for us. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. All right. Thank you. <laughs> How nice is that? How about see? This is kind of cool when it works. When it when people participate, it's kind of yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I just want I, I just want to say I'm I'm sure everybody. Um, to a certain degree has had their their freak out moments or will continue to have their freak out moments with this thing. And and uh, I I personally decided um, uh, last night, I like, I'm, I'm not gonna really watch the news very much because I already know how serious this is. Pretty much you have all the information about how to, you know, wash your hands and stay away. I actually found because I've been to Japan several times, I actually dug up a couple of face masks because when they're sick in Japan, so I found a face mask. It's but um, and and it's those uh, uh, that kind of face mask isn't perfect, but believe me, if everybody's wearing a face mask, um, 
it's going to be a you know 70 or 80 percent less chance that you catch it i mean it's not perfect it's not one of those other ones but you know um but i was listening to you know one of my personal and and, and we've talked about things that inspire you and um hello yeah yes i'm here oh uh, uh who's calling john from philly i can't understand Say it again. John from Philadelphia. John from Philadelphia. John or Don? John. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to yeah. say something to Tom? Because when you're in Japan, you're you might have to interpret for me. Walking on the computer, so I really wasn't hearing it. Oh, what wasn't work working? It's just like. Uh, Stopping and going, and you know it's not all fluid. Oh, bad internet! Bad internet! Bad internet! Yeah, you know, um, there's one thing that I I have to say that I've been learning about this is that uh, we're at the discretion of the internet, and if everybody's home in out like in in my neighborhood, and everybody's on the internet it makes all of my, our speeds slower. It slows everything down. It slows everything down. So some of our connections uh, don't get all that good. Were you, John, have you been able to hear uh, a lot of what Tom has been saying? Uh, yeah, I've heard a little bit. Um, I didn't found it. I didn't find it till uh, you were halfway through it, but uh, I've been a Tower fan from 1969 all the way up. And mm. a lot of my musician friends to go see them every time they came near Philly. And I was there when uh, Carmen Grillo was still playing guitar and Greg Adams was still with them. And uh, Tommy Bowes back in those days. But I was looking forward to seeing them this year. Uh, they were going to be at the Tower Theater and Upper, yeah. Derby. Upper Derby. And uh, I'm just really sad because it's been like two years since I have seen them. And I'm really dying to hear the live album new, or at least most of it. I'm dying to play it for you. <laughs> do, you do you guys still, because I haven't heard it in the last couple of shows that I've been to, are you ever going to bring, out, bring back uh, soul vaccination. Uh, yeah, we uh, in the 18 years I've been in the band. I think it's been in rotation about half the time. Mm -hmm. so, like, you know, about nine years, and it just depends a lot on on. Uh, it kind of it kind of how it feels like how Dave's feeling about playing it. You know, Dave's feeling comfortable. I mean, uh, let's face it. Uh, I think when Dave first played Soul Vaccination, pretty much every drummer in the country was going like, what the heck is he doing? <laughs> and he's explained it to me, and I, I, I can see it's a pretty uh, pretty damn complex thing, you know? And it's uh, <laughs> all the accents. So I, I miss that. It's one of my absolute favorite Tower tunes. It's in the top 10% of Tower tunes. That's my favorite. It's just Soul Vaccination. First couple of years that I saw you guys, I used to see it two or three times a year. That was always in the show, and then all of a sudden, it wasn't in the show for a while. We got, we got to rotate the tunes, man. There's too many tunes. <laughs> and also, if for us, us just um, for our morale, um, I personally uh, love. I mean, I personally would love to to have 50 tunes in rotation. That's kind of unrealistic i mean it's you know it's over 100 was it it might be over 200 tunes that we could possibly play in a show and it's like uh i, I figure like i'm really capable of, of having about 60 or 70 of them memorized all the time if we always rotate them but uh we do that sometimes and sometimes uh just depends on the circumstances and uh i don't make the set list just so you know <laughs> once in a while I get I I I have an I have a, an idea and an opinion and once in a while uh, it's listened to but generally speaking yeah 
I don't I don't meddle with the set list. I let the elders do that. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was with uh, you guys many times behind backstage, and <clears throat> I was uh, Jeff Tamalier and I used to pal around when he would come around the area. I probably know who you are if I saw your face. And uh, he, when when he was getting ready to leave, I guess like when you were going to do um, the Soul Town album, I guess it is. Um, he said that they were trying to find songs to do some, you know, covers of songs, and. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, that was the Great American Soul book. That was a uh, yeah, that was a riff. Yeah, yeah, the Great American Soul book. Right, yeah, that's yeah. the one. Yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, so John, uh, I'm taking another call. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, say thank you for calling, and I want to let uh, somebody else get in here. And I'm I'm enjoying taking all these calls. Thank you for calling in. Is somebody I know. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Who can I ask who's calling? Ray Ponson. Hey Ray. How you doing, dude? <laughs> hey, didn't you do didn't you do a couple circus gigs? Pardon? Didn't you do some circus Vargas gigs back in 8081? No, that was John Worley. Oh, I thought you subbed once or twice. I can't remember. Oh no, Ray, no. Ray and I Ray and I were at Cal State. You know, I'm uh, good buddies with Sal. Yeah, I know, and and we were well. Everybody went. Ray's a, a really great trumpet player. Lives in uh, in Massachusetts right now, I believe, Mass or Rhode Island. Well, I live in Rhode Island. Rhode Island, and uh, we were at Cal State LA and did a you know, right. and stuff. And Ray's a hey, yeah, how you doing, Ray? Kernow, you okay? yeah. Bob Kernow, yeah, yeah. Hey, Ray. Did you yes, see, what's up? Did you see uh Tower when they were what was that Rhode Island gig that I did with you, Tom? It, oh, yeah. it, is that the one at the um uh the last one that they did was at um oh yeah, God, yeah. you both were there in, in on in Main Street in East Greenwich. That's the one, yeah. I was there. Yeah, yeah. Jeff was doing monitors. I was doing monitors on that gig. Yeah. Yeah. Were you at that one, Ray? Yeah, I was at that gig. He's on, my guest list. He's on my guest list. <laughs> you know, I was I, on. So Tommy always gets me on the guest list, man. Well, you know, yeah. it, that was I love you, Tommy. <laughs> I love you too, Ray. You know what? Now that we're on now, now that we're on radio and everybody can hear this, I still want you to record that that tenor solo on that track that I did. Okay, I, I'm not again it. That's for sure. Third CD. Um. Well, you know, this is the time for me to like. Uh, you know, get a little hookup so I can record stuff right here in the living room because that would be the way I need to go right now. I and mean, okay, yeah. well, listen, listen, when you get a chance, Jeff might know how to do that too. Right? And I'll call my engineer and I'll and I'll have him send it to you. That would be a beautiful thing. Okay, <laughs> okay, but call me, dude. Okay, I will. Okay. I don't know what to do right now. I, I get real, it's funny, I, I get, I get, uh, I'm very comfortable uh being a hermit and and isolating i mean it's not that tough for me to, to deal with the situation what's going on here i i, I kind of now that i've embraced it i kind of go like but you know i know that i'm okay for a little while and some people aren't um i can but but i can't weather this storm indefinitely <laughs> none of us can oh so so, uh, so another phone call Ray, yes, thanks sir. for the call, and I'm getting another call, so I'm going to... Okay, I'll let you go. Okay. Tommy, you. give me a call back, okay, when you get a chance, okay? Love you, dude. Love you, too. Look at this. This is crazy. Hello. You, you're on the phone with Tommy Pollitzer. And what's up? It's, Who, it's, it's Eddie. What's going on, man? It's Eddie Curtel. Eddie, Eddie Curtel. Jeff knows Eddie Curtel. What? <laughs> My wife was like, "What are you doing in the living room?" I'm like, "I'm listening." I need, me? I need you know, we could do like we can do like the, me and Brian with the comb can do some duo stuff. You got anything going? <laughs> oh, Eddie. So, hey, so my, I got a question for you, Tommy. It's good good to see you. Uh, I was I was hoping. I think you guys are probably going to play the fair again this year, so I was hoping to try to get down and see it in San Mateo. 
I don't yeah. know if you guys are on that one or not. Uh, we'll see if what we'll see what it all pans out when we can actually be around each other again. You know what I mean, so so like you guys, for me, everything is canceled right through like May. June is quickly approaching cancellation status. Yeah. What have they told you, Tommy, about your about your tours and stuff? How how far out did they just basically say they're going to cancel and when they're going to try to reload on stuff for you guys as a national act? We reloaded uh, some of April already and backloaded it. And our next uh, scheduled gig is May 22nd in Seattle. And that'll happen if uh, they allow people to come to Jazz Alley. And then right after that, we go to, I'd have to look it up, but we had, um, we have May, June, and July dates, and uh, what happens is they basically they're going to get canceled, and some of them get moved right away because the promoters want to move them right away, and um, and we just keep pushing everything back and, until we're allowed to work again. You know, um, right. it's kind of thing for all of us, right? Um, it's a big mystery, and um, <laughs> yeah. But I hope I, I, over here everybody's doing a real good job of sheltering in place. And um, I'm, I'm really glad California shut down. Tim was talking about how bad, uh, you know, the New York area is. Um, plus, you know, that's such a congested city. Right. There's, there's really great examples like, you know, what they've done in China, what they did in Seoul, Korea, and in Japan, where people are just wearing masks. It's like, I think masks out there, everybody, everywhere, put a bandana around your mouth, you know, and, and, and stay six feet away from each other. It's like, I, I was in Costco today and like people were being bad i you know one lady was sneezing she didn't cover her mouth she's like 30 feet away from me and i said cover your mouth when you sneeze and I, I yelled at her i mean it's like come on it's like it's like there's still people not taking and there's i still see people walking around kind of like bloody dog you know um and and like like they're kind of in a daze with all this and i get that but it's like come on people Hunker down, right? And you don't have to wear gloves. You're crazy, not not but, playing yeah, games or but, not. But, you know, I'm doing sure now. I'm, I'm doing the rest of this. I'm wearing my mask for the rest of this interview. All right, now I feel better. All right, well, here, Tom. I don't know if you can see me, but here, okay. Let's just do that. I'm going to do that. So, just, you wanted to know if 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 you're hitting tee shots. Oh, somebody asked that. Um, well. I'm really lucky. I, I, I live on a golf course here in, in the East Bay and the golf course is completely closed. However, they are to some degree maintaining it because they can't, they can't, you know, it's an outside gig for the greenskeepers and they can't let it grow into a weed field because it's too hard to get it back to where you want it. So they're mowing the greens and the fairways every other day. Um, and there's no real hole or flag in the, in the green, but, that doesn't mean I can't go out there with my golf clubs and walk around and hit shots, hit 20 shots into the middle of the green or sit around the green and hit chip shots instead of put a tee in, you know? So yeah, I can, I can practice my golf. I'm really lucky. <laughs> All right. And if I wasn't living in a golf course, I'd probably get in my car and find one that was closed. <laughs> I would just do that. <laughs> so Eddie, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. So Dave, hey. Do you still have my phone number in your phone in your phone by chance? Did it still come up or did you just delete me? <laughs> no, I had you blocked. I had you blocked, but it, it did it did come up. I got I know I know you I got your number, Eddie. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> you can ask them, you know. Yeah, you know, you're doing you good. Do. I watched it a couple of times and uh, mm -hmm. right, you've you've gotten uh, you seem at home, even though you are at home behind the microphone, so that's that's a good thing. Well, here, here's the, here's what everybody who knows me, in, in both of you guys know me, is I can talk. If there's one thing I can do right now is I can talk. So I'm, I. Well, I be, and I couldn't be more comfortable talking to anybody more than I would be talking to you. So oh, I feel yeah. I'm really comfortable with that. You're, you, but your 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 talking is less than your posts on Facebook, so that's good. That's a step in the right direction. <laughs> I don't post, I don't know what the heck. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I don't post that much. Oh, he's talking about me. You, you, you haven't done a, yeah. put a post on Facebook. I know this is about Tom, 
that you oh. don't have to click for more information. That does not exist in any of his posts. You always have to click to read more. That's <laughs> oh okay. I yeah, but Cliff goes deep, man. He goes, he goes like deep. Hey, I'll, I'll I'll let you guys go because everyone's like, who's this dude talking? But Tommy, love you, Jeff, love you, man. Keep right. keep doing it. Hope to see you. Soon. You guys take care. Thanks. Andy. Yeah, yeah. So. I just want to just say, because I was about to say this, is like uh, yesterday I just started listening to um, positive inspirational stuff on YouTube. Like one of my big guys that that when I listen to him always focuses me is Wayne Dyer. I listen to Wayne Dyer talking about all sorts of stuff. And then in that Wayne Dyer feed I had, I listened to uh, admirals. This guy was a Navy SEAL, was an admiral, and he had a, inspirational talk and then i saw another one by another guy and just to really help me focus my mind and uh, you know uh um and and i i i've experienced that we generally become the thoughts that we think in our head right you know? and um you know fear and and all that stuff is a hard thing but i mean in my experience when i really embrace that that monitoring what's going on in my head all the time it's like um i mean i'm i don't i don't you know i'm i'm stuck in this place for another month or two and i'm you know by myself and so it, you made me think i you know, always dreamed about being a hermit right <laughs> so i've always wanted to just be on the beach by myself but yeah but i want to plug uh the guy that i have coming on tomorrow at three david alt he's one of the he comes from the uh new thought world wayne dyer stuff and he's he's really good i would uh, did you have him already i did but my I voice was garbled and uh, it me you could hear him okay but but also i still just want to talk to him again because he's got lots of so much good stuff to say about, about I'll that. That out tomorrow three yeah and i'll film him. so i i want to do something because the um Ray was talking about soul vaccination and I'm going to try, I'm going to try one thing here and um, I'm going to see if I can get it just. Hello. 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 Who is that? We're gonna keep that here. That's my brother Stephen. Oh. Hello. It's my oldest brother. Hi, Stephen. Hi. <laughs> What's up, man? How you How you doing? Stephen lives in uh, um, in Arizona. Yeah. In, uh, in uh, uh, Gilbert, Arizona. To be exact, Gilbert. Yes, and yeah. uh, I'm uh, I'm Tommy's big brother. You That's know, what I just said. we we've actually met, have we, we? Yeah, but it was 40 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where was this? At your mom. Show, the Show him the picture again. He he hasn't seen the yeah. picture. Oh, okay. So, um, let me put this picture up quick and. Uh, <laughs> I, I took this picture. I took this picture. Can you see that? For like Tommy's uh, 22nd or 23rd oh, or something. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. So I was there for that. And yeah, skinny. If I remember right, you have a couple of daughters, right? That's right. Three. Oh, actually. Three now. We adopted a third. Yeah. You have three. I have three daughters now and four granddaughters. Wow. She makes me an uncle and a, and a granduncle. Wow. Oh, yes. I remember that. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> so, are you guys staying safe? If Elise, if Elise was listening right now, oh, she is a friend. But she's oh, not I actually, Elise, I changed, I changed Elise's diaper. Yeah. Remainder of the school year now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay kind of hard on me because I'm a teacher, you know. Yep. And these kids are going to be out for the rest of the year, right? Yeah. 
they're out for the rest of the year. Kind of hard. I, I'm a teacher, you know. I teach special education. Yeah. Man. Well, hopefully we'll get some online stuff. Excuse me. We got a bad connection. Yeah. Can you hear can you hear Tom? Uh not very well. Oh yeah, the connection's kind of bad. Um he wants to know if he, he he's hoping that you get some online uh teaching. Well, I'm um uh have a couple of prospects for online teaching, yes. And and I went through a uh a tech orientation uh, this uh, today at noon. Mm. And That's the three part thing. The good news is that the two parts of the, my test of my computer itself and my test of my technology, I passed very well. Yeah. The bad news is that the third part, I mean, my network, uh, my uh, upload and download speeds didn't make the grade and so i'm gonna have to, so i'm gonna try to get any work of that sort i'm gonna have to upgrade my service yeah right well you know um, that's the one thing that that i've been discovering in all of this as we go that yeah. the thing that makes all of this work is upload and upload speed as opposed to download speed so yes. the, the, the speed of my my stream it, it's it gets weird when it's low and yeah the more people that are on the internet bring me as i get older <laughs> yeah uh so i couldn't resist <laughs> so so uh uh steve it, it's good to good for you to call in it's like in an hour and it's time for me to sort of call wrap up i'll talk to you soon brother steven i love you soon i'll okay. touch base and get up to date okay, okay. Work. all right thank you thank you we have a question here. Um, <laughs> Janet Lay says, come visit your brother. It was nice meeting you all in Napa, somebody says. TJP, TJ Paganini says, David Alt is very inspirational. So she knows me. Uh, Diane Petruzzi says, love me some way, Dyer. I, I didn't know you knew him, Diane. Huh? Um, Jessica, Jessica Charbonne up in, uh, up in uh, Montreal or is it Quebec City? Jessica's a sax player. Uh, how can you play with mask on? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You could cut a hole in the mask. Did you cut yeah. a mask? Oh, John J. Carlson, friend of mine, using a wired connection versus Wi-Fi for streaming is imperative. Using a wired connection yes. versus Wi-Fi for streaming. So, huh. Mine is wired. John, yours is wired. Yeah, I wired mine in. and it, it, it in, Into your up. laptop. Into like my laptop. Yes. Oh, okay. So your upload speed would increase if you went off of Wi-Fi and just. You mean plug right into my modem on a wire? Correct. And oh, then, Quebec City, Jessica said. That's right. That's what I said. I thought I said Montreal, and I said Quebec City. See, so this is like, uh, like us talking. Oh, wait, Jessica has like the coolest kitty cat. Really? Oh, uh, she. I'm a cat lover, and she put pictures of her kitty and i go like oh. that is badass <laughs> <laughs> oh dale hey what's up dale where's dale like you know dale walter don't you dale? Know dale walter ethernet cable john says i don't know hey my macbook pro does not have an ethernet i'm gonna have to get a hub right john no i'm looking at this you have to get a you just have to get a little adapter like this can you so see usb-c USB to ethernet okay i got you yes. yeah okay yes. i'm a, i'm kind of not super techie but i i actually learn really quickly uh, yeah just, yeah we all will learn how to do this at some yeah. point I just can't wait to hear. okay i'm actually, I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually kind of looking at my live feed too <laughs> i'm actually going to have a show about this tomorrow night talking about this with john okay. Conley, who used to be he was uh tomorrow tomorrow night at eight o'clock is John mm -hmm. Conley. John Conley. Yeah, he was the Pro Tools rep for Avid and DigiDesign for like 25 years. Really? Yes. That sounds pretty, that sounds pretty heavy. And he, he's called me from Stevie Wonder's studio saying, guess where I am? You know, that's that's my buddy, John. So he's going to come on and explain some of that stuff because he works at KCRW. No, KWCR. I don't know. Some radio station here. 
and mm-hmm. they tasked him with learning out learning how to do all this stuff remotely from home. Ooh. We're going to have him on and discuss all the stuff we're talking about, upload speed and download speed and all that kind of stuff. So it'll make all this easier. So I'm sure we have some tower fans out there. Um, what if I can get, I might be able to get um, Doc to do one of these with you. I'll see. You probably have to use his iPhone. Can you do it on his iPhone? Can. Yes. But his son has a Mac. His son Mac, I think, has a Mac too. But Doc might be, uh, I mean, he's sitting around home, you know, with twiddling his thumbs like me. Oh, man. I'd love to have Doc. And Doc, Doc is a, Doc, I'm sure you get a whole bunch of people turn in. And I mean, I would, I would make sure I would tune in and share it. Um, and uh, Doc is just a fountain of knowledge and one of the most interesting people to talk to. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we're doing is is you know everybody knows you play and everybody wants to hear you play and see the band play because we're all fans but what we're able to do here is sort of a live talk show that not everybody gets to participate in and mm-hmm. just talk and call in uh I, I tentatively have roger scheduled for wednesday night oh good well i'm gonna make sure to tune in you know i've been tuning in and uh yeah, I mean, what else have we got to do? Especially when you when you when you're talking to my friends, you know, and just right. I'm gonna be a fly on the wall because I yeah, learn, you know, John with John's inter- Mater's interview was you know learning a whole bunch of different stuff from him. Well, um, you, what was interesting is is when we were when John and I were just talking about stuff, somebody was watching and said, "I learned so much about music and drumming just from hearing the two of you talk about stuff." Yeah, you know. Yeah. So I, mean, I, you know, I, know, I you know who else would do this for you and, and, and probably in a second is Dave Garibaldi. Yeah, I'd like to maybe I'll call him and ask yeah, him. his number and yeah, you can call. I mean, you have Doc's number too, I think. I, yeah, but Dave and and uh, and if you need me to call him first and tell him what's going on because you know that always helps. You know, with Dave. <laughs> you can maybe email email them ahead of time. And- yeah, yeah, that would, that would be good. Yeah. Yeah, so Dave's usually a, has a pretty good Facebook presence, and yeah. I haven't checked out his page. Um, I've kind of been doing stuff where instead of like looking at my timeline feed and all the stuff that gets stuck on your timeline feed that goes like, you know, right. bar, I, I go to I go, I'll go to uh, people's personal page and look what they posted. So I'm not looking at my timeline. I'm looking at your page, right? Um, right. Page, John Worley's page. And I'll just go like oh, look down my friends list and I'll click on somebody and say, what's going on with them? Um, cause, cause, cause my timeline might, you know, looking at my timeline feed, it's kind of like watching the news. It's like, it's, it's, it's all bad. And, and let's face it, you know, they want you to keep your TV on the news station. And, and I think we all pretty much know what we need to do. Right. You know, get a mask if you can stay away from people. Um, unless you happen to have living with them and just that's what you got to do. Well, you know, um, uh, one last thing on, on this, and then I, I want to ask you before we close about the new record quick. Um, so, you know, I'm not, I'm separated from Mackenzie's mom and she was going to go to her mom's today, but her mom uh, called and said uh, that her coworker had tested positive for Corona virus. And I said, well, what's that going to do for you? So, we are not going to have Mackenzie go to her mom's, right? You know, the, 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 I forget the company in the South Bay that just came out with the test and they're, they're pumping out 10,000. It's down in Silicon Valley. It was a really big deal about three, four days ago that Gavin News and the governor of California was talking about. And they're able to pump out and they, they give you a test result within 15 minutes. And they're now in mass production. They're cranking out uh, something like, I think 10,000 units a day. Holy just, cow. You know, right? I think it's 10,000 and it's pretty amazing. So hopefully within the next two or three weeks in California and as it spreads out across the country, but here in California, we're going to be able to be tested right. and know who we can interact with and who we can't. Right. It'd be nice, you know. Um, it'd be, you know, it'd be nice to be able to pat someone on the back or something. Yeah, you know, it'd be nice to give you a hug. Yeah, I know. I just you know, like, can't, like I, you, you know, know hey, 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 can't touch that, right? Do 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 do. 
Yeah, yeah, we should just be playing. That should be that should be the the theme music when you know that should be the theme show of the Green Room. No, listen, <laughs> you know I've been I've been playing at every opening and closing of every show with the new album, right? Oh, okay. Right, and those you guys, I mean that I love the record, right? And every time I play it, I get this Facebook thing saying you don't have permission to use this song, and I hit, and I always said yes, I do. <laughs> 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 and you know it still lets me play it but but you know um i wanted to play because you don't you only do a couple of solos on this new record right yeah i had a lot on the old the, the one before the first one yeah, uh, on uh soul side of town but uh can i just uh yeah i i'll just a little a little uh caveat is i'm not really happy the way uh my my tenor was was recorded on this new album um, and there's a couple of tunes. I mean, uh, it sounds to me like they put a lot of compression on it mm. and I hate compression, but on the, the one before it, cause we, we did all these tunes at the same time. Right. A tune called after hours. Mm. That's a three and a half minute instrumental. And on that cut, if you listen to my tone and I play alto solo on that, I play alto and tenor and, um, and you compare that to the tone and, and it sounds okay but you know when i record myself in my living room for practice stuff and hear my tone it's like uh i know all the sax players all the horn players out there it's like when, when your tone's not captured the way you hear it and the way you feel like you've had it recorded before um and to me sound is everything sound and phrasing you know or or more more or, or, or half the battle Right. <laughs> now, how did you watch in that part when George and I were talking about his tone and how he said he had to learn to breathe and everything to make his tone the way it is? Mm. And uh, and it's a great little story that he had. But but this is when you came up because you and I, we were talking about people's tone. And uh, at some point we got to you and your tone and you and George and I know from mixing sound for you and I've mixed sound where George has been in is the sound you guys have. And, and you know, the kind of tenor players I'm talking about where they get that kind of honky nasally sound and they may play good solos, but there's no full body to the tone. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. and you, George don't have that. You, you have just this nice big full sound. And George says, it's not the horn, you know, it's, it's really how you play it. And the reason he, Absolutely. it wasn't the horn is because he had, uh, uh, oh, I forget. It wasn't Ernie, um, Ernie, Ernie, Ernie Watts. I think he went for a lesson and he grabbed George's horn and started playing it. And it sounded beautiful. It's the same. Right. <laughs> handed, handed it back to George and goes up. It's not the horn. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, it's it's uh, you know everybody everybody's mouth cavity and the you know the shape of their lips and the way they use their air and and it's it's just uh, just like your human voice it just comes out different for every every player right. You know? um, in fact, share this with all the sax players out there. In 1987, I was at a Steps Ahead clinic, and they had just come uh, up at UC Berkeley. Michael Brecker, of course, is in the band, and and it's like 300 people, and this this one person asks, to me, I already knew it was like an embarrassing question, like don't ask that question, and he goes like, you're like the greatest saxophone player who's ever lived, and of course, Michael Brecker doesn't want to hear that because you got Charlie Parker and Jocko Train and all these other people, and he goes, you're like the greatest sax player who's ever lived. It's like it's like you can play anything. It's like there is there anything you can't do. And, and Brecker goes, yeah, there's a lot of things I can't do. For instance, I've tried to sound like Stanley Turrentine. I really tried because I really want to, and I can't do it. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, you can't in a million years sound like Stanley Turrentine. You guys are like completely so iconically different where like Brecker plays one note, Stanley plays one out, you know immediately who the two guys are and they don't sound similar and they don't 
Although Brecker can phrase like Tarantino sometimes. But the and, um, but yeah, but the tone, it just, you can't sound like him. He just, and doesn't create solos the way, he doesn't think like Stanley thinks, you know? And Stanley, I mean, Brecker is technically, can do things that Stanley Turrentine never did, or maybe could not do. Right favorite sax players in the world so you know it's like uh, junior walker it's like freaking junior walker's awesome he can't he just does one thing but man <laughs> that one thing he does is like holy shit that's so fucking good i mean it's just you know and, it, it's, it's, I, I, and that's kind of what I, I, I you know that's what inspires me it's just you know when guys hit your hit you in the chest and 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 I believe me, I like all, you know, I like like listening. To, I go in phases where I'm just listening to the jazz and, uh, you know, people like Joel Fromm, you know, pe people are great fishermen, pe people, Doug Webb, uh, people deserving way more recognition than they get. Mm. Um, um, it's just, and they're, they're all, you know, I mean, those guys are all real, real straight ahead players. Right, you know? right. Not that they can't do other stuff. Right. Yeah. So well, let me, let me, uh, it, because we're at hour, we're over time. hour and 10 minutes. What, wh where is the solo on after hours? Where does it come in about halfway through? It comes in about, yeah. Well, for it starts. Yeah. It was three comes. It, it, there's a trade off between me and trombone. And, uh, then the alpha solo comes in for eight bars. And, so and, around a minute, a minute 30. And, and you said that was Ray playing the trombone. Ray green on trombone. Man, <laughs> oh, good, huh? Right. Okay. So I'm gonna take it out. People have to know that Ray Green was a trombone major at Berkeley before he switched to be a vocal major. Holy! Oh, yeah, he's a great trombone player. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, because I asked you, I said, "Who's playing bone?" He goes, "He's Ray Green. He's the singer." <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so I'm going to try to cue up uh, your sax solo in this and take us out and uh we'll listen to it a little bit uh i will close off our live feed but you and i will still stay connected until we decide yeah. to goodbye right. thanks everybody for listening thank really you appreciate the comments and made me feel like i i'm gonna go look back and see you know um you know oh terry peffer oh thank terry uh rojas brothers god dang it look at all these people that said hi that's so cool how many viewers did we have total uh, well, I've had a, a consistent between 50 and 60 and up to 71 at one time okay. That's well, not for a, for a guy like me just starting out. Well, just, yeah. Well, just keep, you know, momentum, it gets exponential. Right. All right. Thank you. Hopefully you'll get a bunch of friend requests so people will see when, when you're doing this. Okay. All right. So we're going to go out. We're going to listen to some tower of power. Right. All right.
Signing off, folks. Thank you, Tom. And we'll see you later. Goodbye.